just kind of on a whim. I um, the other day I went to a site that you can chart from. You can do like um, it's called it's called um, Drada IO is what it used to be called. It's now been, the domain's been moved, but it redirects, and um, it allows you to make charts. And I made I made I made an image that I want to talk about real quick because this image I think it, this is these are things that you won't hear from anybody again. This is this is stuff that is not going to be in any sermon, but at the same time it's universally true, and I think you'll you'll feel the truth of it when we talk about it um, real quick. Um, you'll you'll kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about and how true it is and how serious it is. Um, so I don't know how to, to exactly to translate this, but I'm just going to go ahead and say. When somebody is very far from God, let's imagine somebody is an atheist. They hate religious people, they hate religion, and they hate God. And they don't believe in moral behavior, right? What they will do is they will make this statement right here. They will say, I am a good person. The problem is existence. The problem is this world is messed up. The problem is that we just need to, we need to cease to exist. They'll say something like that. Or that existence is the problem. You just need to enjoy life because you know what? We're not, we're not get, we're, I'm not dealt a good set of cards. And so I need to enjoy life. And so you'll say the problem is with the existence I'm living. Um, and then you go up the ladder. Somebody will say, I'm a good person. I fight for justice. I believe in the people. All those religious people are the problem. But I'm fighting for justice in the world. That's the next person, right? Again, I'm a good person. This is the very important pre- pre-statement you have to say that right the next group person up will say i'm a good person if there's a heaven i don't know if there is i, I kind of believe in a god if there's a heaven i'll be there right and then the next person well, this is where we start getting into christians they'll say i am a christian and what i do doesn't matter i'm saved by god's grace his grace is going to come into my heart and save me and he saved me already and i am saved and therefore because i identify as a christian i am now saved by his grace and then you'll come to a Catholic who is, an, I would say, an erroneous Catholic. And they will say, I identify as a Catholic. They don't do things like confession and repentance and things like that. But I am saved by his mercy, right? His mercy will save me. His mercy will save my atheist son. His mercy will save all the sinners around us. And this is a Catholic who is going about it the wrong way, right? And then finally, you'll start to go into people who are getting closer to the truth. And they'll say, I go to Mass Confession occasionally. And I live in obedience. So therefore, I'm justified. I'm righteous. I, I, I'm doing what I need to do. The next person is going to say, I'm striving and confessing and living in obedience. You know, I'm going to confession frequently. I'm trying to do a good job. And I'm listening to my parents. And I'm listening to the priests. And I'm trying to pay attention to the laws of the church. Historically and in contemporary times, I'm not trying to break away. That person, they, there's, a, there's, a, there's a struggle in and out, in and out. They're, they're, they're leaving communion and coming back into communion with frequent confessions this is probably where most of us are uh, but but they're but they also see at the beginning of this i am a good person this is an important preamble that everybody puts at the beginning of their statements and finally i am a good person i am living without sin and i'm in perfect obedience that's where we should strive to be we would want to be where we can say where we can we can act and live such that we don't commit mortal sin and you can do that people say you can't do that and it's wrong to think that that is not true you you need to strive so that you no longer commit mortal sins that offend God. And that should be your goal. Now, don't despair when you don't. Again, if you're at that second level and you're battling and you're struggling, that's a good thing to do that. And of course, you want to fight and you want to keep it. You don't want to go down those levels. But one thing I want to say here, and this is what kind of the heart of this is, is that on each of these levels, people will begin with, I am a good person. Or I am I'm justified in what I'm doing. Why? Because we must justify our position. Even, even a... Even a the most scoundrel is criminal will say that bottom one. They'll say, the problem is I'm dealt a bad set of cards. I'm a good person. So the, even though I'm a bad person, they might say, what they're saying is that existence hasn't treated me fairly. So people will always justify their position and they will always settle themselves because to be to say I'm a good person, to say that I am I am okay with where I am is is essential for living. You cannot live a day in your life if you don't have like um, a stability of saying I'm, I'm okay who I am right our job and this is something that you won't hear from anybody but I really believe this is true and I think Christ was very clear about this and I think the saints are often very clear about this our job in many ways is to unsettle that I am a good person part to take it and go you are not a good person to take that and go 
Ask that question and don't just accept that you're a good person because what people do is they set themselves into equilibriums. And as you see here, that equilibrium could be a hater of God. They could be at an equilibrium saying, I, I hate God, but I'm a good person, right? So, I mean, we really need to be able to go, you should question whether you're a good person. And I'd say that straight up this line, all the way up to that one, even the one at the very top, even the one who lives in perfection and perfect obedience, you should, you should go get my pride out of there. And not saying that everyone has pride and just kind of like, oh, no, no, really, you yourself, my, I myself, you're not safe. Nobody is safe. Do not feel like you that, like we have a, 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 get, a get to heaven free card. We do not. And do not think that we're in a place where, where, um, where, where we're good. But certainly, if somebody is, is down this spectrum down here, it is not a virtue to not let them know that. Now, maybe there's ways to do that. There's ways to not do it. There's ways to do it correctly. But at the same time, to go your whole life and not tell them that they are in danger or not let them hear that they are in danger, you are now, I mean, it's a sin. It's a sin of omission. And so we cannot like look down that hierarchy and ignore the state of everybody down there. We can't do that. And up where we are, we can't say, I'm a good person. We need to be able to unsettle that and go, I am in danger. And even when you say, I live in perfection, I live in perfect obedience, right there, we should also have fear. We should go, you know what? I need to realize it's all a gift from God and I'm in danger. And then you need to lower yourself in that way. But basically that I am a good person part is always inserted by everybody and it needs to be unsettled in everybody, but especially in those who are very far from God. And people would say the opposite. They'd say, so especially in the religious. No, no especially in those who are living in sin and who are in danger of a deep pit of hell. Those who are living in, in, in rancor, disgusting, rotten grossness of life and murder, murder of babies, things like that, they need to be made aware because they will accuse you. You know, As they say nice things to you now, in the afterlife, you will be accused for not telling them. Don't doubt it. They will be your accuser. They will be pointing their finger and saying, why did you not tell me what was happening to me? Why did you act like everything was fine when I was going to hell? Why did you not tell me? And so even if they hate us for it here, our job is to, to be that unsettling presence of you are not a good person. And that's really what we kind of need to do up this whole ladder is really kind of unsettle that, that, that natural tendency towards self, self, um, self comfort, self content that people are all giving themselves. People all give themselves self-content no matter how bad they are. But we really need to unsettle that. We need to settle, unsettle it right up the chain, but certainly for the ones who are farthest away, especially. People who are living in deep, deep sin, they need to hear that it's not okay. They need to hear that. We cannot um, reinforce their sin. So I just wanted to get that point across. I drew this up just thinking about this and realizing how little people talk about it and how often we talk about giving people comfort and um, I really do want people to, to like strive to not give people comfort more and really oppose giving people comfort and really be that person who everyone doesn't want to talk to. To really accept that and really be, able, be willing to embrace that in ourselves. So let's close with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you guys next week.